All right. Yo, welcome to the first episode of the Thoughts Podcast. I am Paul Lowe. And for my first episode, I got on one of my favorite people in terms of fitness content creation. <laughs> Jack, Jack Beddle. Beddle, am I saying it right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Bang on. <laughs> All right. So, Jack, the first question that I'm going to ask you is yeah. what made you start your journey both in fitness and as a content creator? Okay. So my journey into fitness so originally, you know, um, kind of when I like finished sixth form. So I finished sixth form and then obviously you go out there. I got a job, got an apprenticeship, wasn't really happy with that. So I kind of had this downtime in between. So I was like, uh, you know, I'm not particularly the most confident person. Didn't really like the way I looked. So I was like, you know, I'll just, just sign up for the gym and see how that goes. So went down to my local leisure center. Didn't have a, a Scooby-Doo of what I was doing. I'd just look up random, like, workouts online. Um, but, but, you know, I kind of enjoyed it. Kind of got into the routine of things. It's kind of like a lifestyle thing. Um, and that kind of just stemmed from, I was always a pretty slim guy, pretty skinny, skinny kid. Um, I, a few confidence issues, but nothing, nothing too crazy. It's just something, uh, like another hobby to pick up. So I started doing that and, you know, never looked back. It's been a great journey so far. Um, and in terms of like content creation, um, you know, I've been doing it for like a good few years now. So I've, I've racked up like a decent amount of experience. Um, certainly made a lot of mistakes along the way, especially when I was first starting out. Um, so I figured, you know, I'll just make some videos, um, put some stuff out there just to help people who have been in like my position previously, because it can be quite like a daunting experience. Um, and it's just quite helpful if you just have someone to like kind of guide you along the way, just kind of, like you can kind of relate to them. You can go on their page, check out like their tips and videos and, you know, see if they're doing particular things differently or how they do something. Um, so it just kind of stemmed from that. Just basically, basically just trying to help people, trying to help like younger guys in my position, people who've like gone through the same kind of journey with me. And uh, yeah, it's quite a fun thing to do to be honest. It seems to be working out pretty well. Sounds good. It clearly is, man. I mm. obviously follow your page. The gains are looking wild. The cuts are looking mm. great, by the way, I must say. Cheers, bro. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, no problem. No problem. Um, so if you have a particular process for your content, like if you do in terms of just what's the step-by-step process of you deciding mm. on what content you make to it going up on TikTok or Instagram, what's that process like? Um, so a lot of it's just kind of things that come to my head. I have like, um, like an app where you can kind of like jot your ideas down about like video ideas and stuff. But I mean, a lot of the stuff kind of just comes from comments and messages I get. So someone leaves a comment on TikTok video, you can do like a, like a video reply message. So I'll do that, turn it into a kind of video. Or if I get like a, like a message on Instagram or, or some other site, I can turn that into a video as well. Like every single piece, every, any question someone asks you, you can kind of turn it into a bit of content. Um, because if one person wants to know it, it would be safe to assume there's more people out there that want, that want to know the same bit of information. So you can turn that into a video. Um, things, things that I see other people do, they might have a good idea. You know, I could kind of put my own twist on that. So you just kind of take inspiration from others, um, even just things you hear, um, or even just from browsing the internet, things that people ask you. That's kind of where your ideas stem from. Or if you just sit down for a few minutes, you might be able to brainstorm a few ideas. But a lot of it just comes um, just from other people um, and just like questions they ask me. I don't spend like crazy long thinking of stuff to do because it comes to me quite quickly. Um, and there's so much, so much to cover in the fitness industry. Like you, you can have ideas, like I've, like I have a long list of ideas. Um, so yeah, you, you, you get a lot of stuff out of that. I hear that. I hear that. And you mentioned in the introduction about confidence and how you weren't always the most confident person when you left school, obviously. So mm -hmm. my next question to you is what has content creation actually taught you if it has taught you anything? uh what's it taught me um it's taught me that like everybody's on like a different journey everybody's kind of doing their own thing um like no no two people are the same and so one like one type of video or something you put out for like one person like might be completely different for another person Everyone, everyone's just very different um all right sorry about that jack but That's right. As you were saying, you were saying about um, confidence and what consecration has taught you. 
yeah so also within like the actual like like making the video process like you learn to kind of be conf more confident on camera you kind of treat it as like what well, i do you treat it as like you're just talking to like a mate or like another person so it kind of brings out your confidence there to just kind of express yourself on camera because i mean when i first did it it, it felt like very weird it felt like a bit foreign you're just like talking to like the screen but then over time you kind of just gain the confidence and you just kind of get used to it and and i now i just see it as like i'm just talking to a friend who's next to me um which just makes it like a lot easier um you just you just kind of and i guess that transfers into like real life as well because you if you can talk to like a camera i guess you can talk to like other people like i'm, I'm in the gym i go talk to like a bunch of people i know it's just good to socialize and things like that so definitely brings out the confidence in you I like that. I like to hear that because I feel like the gym in general is a place where you often grow in confidence. I remember in my own fitness journey that's been going on for about a year and a half, almost two years now, it's yeah. taught me that, or it's given me a sense of confidence that I can't, I don't need to like worry about things as much. I don't need to mm. like worry about spaces I'm in because now, because you, it's like the, it feeds into the whole thing of, you know, look good, feel good. Right. And that's literally what it has taught me to the highest degree. Mm. And my next yeah. question, what do you hope to achieve? Not only physically with your own fitness goals, but what do you hope to achieve on social media? Um, so in terms of like physically, just, <laughs> just get, just get massive, big, get strong, keep, just keep improving year on year, basically. Um, yeah, that, that's just kind of the like physique goals, kind of strength goals. Uh, but in terms of like social media, um, just just to keep growing, to be honest, you know, it's it's, it's quite a fun process. I quite I quite enjoy just making videos, um, chatting, waff, waffling into the camera is quite fun. But then, uh, like the goal is just to grow, and then um, hopefully I can use that as like a a way to like generate some form of income. I do that on the side or do that full time, whatever. Because you, it's like. I guess it's kind of a hobby at the moment. Um, so if you can turn that kind of hobby into a way of making some form of income, I think that's a pretty fun thing to do and you'll definitely enjoy it a lot more. So yeah, just keep growing, keep putting videos out, helping others, um, giving some good advice, good tips. Just carry on what I'm doing, but just on a large scale really and uh, better quality. I like, I like the sound of that. Um, from the content you make, I find it almost refreshing because it doesn't feel like I'm constantly having product placement thrown in my face. Obviously, of course, you want yeah. that because that's income for you, affiliate links. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, eventually, yeah, of course, of course. Of course. But I feel like with you, what makes you refreshing as someone I can follow and whose content I almost look forward to, even if it's just the 60-second TikTok, it's yeah. the fact that you come across as, gen like, as genuine as just the average guy starting a fitness journey. Obviously, yeah. yours is going incredibly well, but you still have a sense mm -hmm. of, humidity realism and understanding that like not everyone is trying to be a joe phaser or uh god what's his name i don't even know like a fit <laughs> UK fitness influencer like yeah <laughs> and that right there i think is what separates you from a lot of people and what makes you for me mm. personally one of my favorite people to listen to in terms of fitness content creation and one of the people i would have <laughs> reached out to yeah and um thanks man yeah, I, I really appreciate that's that's awesome to hear man honestly yeah, yeah i just i just i just i just try to keep it real you know just um just just be yourself on camera literally like how you act in, in real life just portray that on, on camera and then just don't just don't bs people just don't try and put on like a, a fake thing just be you talk how you talk and just act how you act like i think that's just the best way to do it just be yourself and people and if people like you they like you they don't like you they don't like you but just just keep it real really and uh, I think it's the best way to do it. Honestly, you are not wrong. So mm. now my next question, as you mentioned, bigger fitness influencers like Dave Trains, Joe Faisal, mm. a lot of people do try to emulate them to a much lesser extent. And I feel like it gets to a point where you're just getting thrown information out from these people who obviously have worked incredibly hard, but then it's also a sense of, do they really understand their audience or do they really care about the people or do they just want the my protein sponsorship? And mm. this whole thing just leads me into my next question of where do you think the fitness community in general needs to improve? If you think it needs to improve. Oh, 
That's a, that's a good question. Um, where do they need to improve? Mm. I think, I think it's, I think the fitness community is kind of going in the right direction, um, especially with like kind of the emergence of TikTok because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of people out there that make like videos that kind of portray like a, like a kind of a real life and kind of how most people live their life like to do with I quite like the videos where it's like um this is what I look like like everyday basis this is what I look like in the gym with like a good pump like in lotion or whatever and they kind of made that comparison just to try and keep it real with people and they like try and show people that like the average person doesn't look like this guy who just looks absolutely incredible 24 7 like that does not happen so people that just kind of um like i said just keep it real um that's quite good content um and it's and, and in like more recent times i feel like that's the kind of the way the fitness industry is headed like there's there's still a lot of like bs out there but i feel like people are starting to like filter out the bs and filter out like what's like good like what's good content what's bad content because half the time i mean a lot of stuff in the internet there's a lot quite a lot of rubbish on the internet but i feel like it is headed in the right direction and a lot of people you'll see like some videos if someone makes like a like a bad video about like a certain like muscle group and like oh yeah this works this muscle group when it just doesn't there's a lot of comments saying like this is just like wrong um and i feel like a few years ago people wouldn't be as like aware of that so i i, I think it's headed in a pretty good direction to be honest that's good i'm glad to hear that because obviously i'm just a consumer and i obviously i have posted a bits and pieces of fitness content across my tiktok but yeah i'm nowhere near the level of knowledge understanding or general progress as yourself or any other people i've previously named mm. so it's good there's, to, there's, there's it's always good. always something to learn always like <laughs> Like I've I've been doing this for like a, a good few years, and you know I've, I say I've racked up a decent amount of experience and knowledge, but like there's so there's so much to learn out there. Like you can't just be like, oh yeah, I've done this for a few years, that's it. Not not knowledge stops there. No more learning. It, there's people doing this like twenty plus years and like still learning stuff. So it's that's why it's quite cool because there's always something new to learn. There's always even from like TikTok. This I've learned so much from it from like YouTube, just from reading stuff. Always always something to learn. All right. So now, what does success look like to you? Because I know how you've mentioned affiliate codes. You've mentioned hoping to turn into something profitable, helping people out. Mm. So what does success look like to Jack? Um, I guess, I guess long term, to, to be successful from it, you will make like a, a decent income from it, I guess. Um, I mean, you can talk about like, Pro sponsorships, affiliate codes, that's definitely part of the process, I guess. But I mean, it does, doesn't, bother, doesn't bother me like too much. I guess if you make good content, you make good videos, like that, that stuff will just naturally come to you. Um, but like, as someone who just makes videos, I guess success is more like having an actual like positive impact on other people. Like, I, what's the like some people are so focused on like money and just like oh yeah i post this like really clickbait video get like loads of views loads of likes those interactions and you know make some money off of it but i think if you like make videos and actually like enjoy making videos i think the success that comes from that should be in the form of like having a positive impact having, having like a positive influence on other people telling giving them right information giving them good like good tips good tricks things like that um but obviously the, obviously the financial side eventually comes into it. So if you want to look at it from like a, a statistic, statistical point of view, then it would be money. But I think there's much more to it than just making money, cheap, get a quick cash off of it, to be honest. Fair enough. Because I feel like fitness in general is a large scale investment into yourself first and foremost. And mm. I feel like if your goal is to become a fitness influencer, but you don't have a level of, understanding and willingness to in like you can't transfer that investment into yourself into other people or the willingness to or you can't inspire other people to willingly invest into themselves mm. then ultimately even if you can push a product you're not gonna be sustainable long term yeah you need to be like genuine 
and you need to like invest in knowing yourself but like others as well and the type of content you put out it needs to you need to be genuine i think that's the that's the key to it just oh most definitely and that leads me on to my second to last question the best yeah. advice you could give to other people in your industry so let's say there was a young person starting out 17 year old been going to the gym for a minute want to start mm. creating content reached out to you what would you tell them in terms of like going to the gym or like making videos and stuff like that uh, making videos and making videos the so start with making videos and then yeah, yeah. Make, okay um I mean, if, if you're quite inexperienced, I'd say just like document your progress. Um, again, like I've said before, just be you, be, be genuine, be you, like take us through like your, your journey. People, people, people love that kind of stuff. People love watching other people's like journey, that kind of story. Um, don't, don't try and copy other people um, because usually it doesn't really work. And it's usually quite obvious if you're trying to copy like someone else's style, or, like how they talk or whatever, just be yourself do your own thing. You'll grow in confidence and you'll, and you'll gain the experience and you'll eventually get better at this kind of stuff. Like when I, when I first started out, like, like I didn't really know what I was doing to be honest. So you just, but you just kind of learn as you go through, you kind of learn the process, kind of learn how to like do certain edits and things like that. But I think the main thing is just to have fun, be yourself, have fun and go along the journey, take other people with you. And, you know, people like that stuff. I like that. And I like how you've consistently kept this theme of authenticity, which is something that mm. I believe across any and all industries or any and all yeah, need of content creation. If you aren't willing to truly be yourself or be an authentic version of yourself on the internet, yeah, it might work for a while. It might work very, very well. But at some point, you're going to have a crash. And when that crash comes and when those people can see through the persona, you ultimately won't make anything of it you will crash and then you lose all the success that you were trying to build and my mm -hmm. final question to you before i let you go what is the best and worst types of content you see in your industry in terms of fitness content <laughs> okay um i got the i think i think the worst is just like clickbait clickbait videos that just like give really really bad advice like the ones that they make me laugh it's like um like oh yeah chuck a like squeeze a lemon into your water you lose like five pounds in five days or something like that or don't eat carbs because carbs are bad for you don't eat this type of sugar in this cereal packet don't eat this don't eat that it's just because half cause mo like all the time it's just complete nonsense and just doesn't make any sense um so yeah, a any anything that just kind of spreads nonsense is just the worst type of content, I think. Um, in terms of like the best type of content, ooh, I do, me personally, I love just like watching, um, like I just like seeing people's transformations from like a, like a, a slim teenager and like, they've gone through like this whole process of going to the gym, training, eating, and have developed into this like much more confident, better person themselves. Um, I like watching kind of like vlogs, vlog kind of stuff, where they just kind of take you through like the like their day or like like gym vlogs as well. Um, when they like set up a camera, get a microphone there, and they like talk you through like before the set. They go through the set with each up with you, um, and you kind of see like their natural reaction because it's, it kind of brings out like um, the authenticity of you. Like it's like their gen genuine reaction to a set. Just kind of stuff where. You, they just kind of, you just see like the real side of the person. I just like that kind of stuff. Yeah. I am the same, really. I like transformation videos much of the next person, especially mm -hmm. when it's just someone who, from looking at their content, didn't initially plan out to become something in fitness, just shared their process. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. with the legitimate advice, with the obvious things like calorie deficit and stuff like that. Or and they've gone through this transformation, they now feel as confident. When you physically see them, a happier, healthier person in the comments of support as well. Mm. It just makes everything, it, it, it re-inspires that kid in me or that kid in everyone where like, it motivates you to get in that gym. It motivates you to mm. go and be your best. Yeah. And yeah, that is what we all want. So yeah, Jack, mm. I want to say thank you for your time. And no worries, man. It's fun. And well, do you have any questions you want to ask me? Like <laughs> if, if you do. Yeah.
Um, when I just just about the, just about the podcast, like, um, what made you like want to start this kind of thing? Oh, um, what made me want to start this was because in university I studied broadcast journalism, and mm. from there, having done modules that had things to do with podcasting, I realized this is very much somewhere that I could excel or something I could do because I realized how like easy or simple it was to set up. But then obviously with my experience as a journalist, I felt like I've always wanted to hear other people's stories and be able to tell them and just give them a platform to tell their story and just give them somewhere to talk, give them somewhere where they can discuss their thoughts and share their thoughts. Hence the name, Mm -hmm. The Thoughts Podcast. So yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, that was what inspired me. And I had one earlier when I was in first year, which isn't great, but I still keep up for like motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's, it's, just one of those things you just got it's consistency you've got to stick to it um with anything with anything um especially with like putting like stuff out online you just, just got to keep posting stay consistent and uh should go up from there so, yeah. yeah most definitely all right jack i want to say a big thank you to you and we'll stop